All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I just wanted to read through some of Romans, the 11th chapter, so that we can get an understanding on it, because it seems as though a lot of men um, stumble at this chapter. All right, even men who've been in the truth, all right, uh, for 30 years plus, you know, uh, use this chapter to promote a false narrative, all right, but this chapter is speaking of the Israelites, all right, those of the circumcision and those who are of the uncircumcision, which will explain what those two mean. Um, ultimately, you had the circumcision, those who were raised in the customs, they're known as the natural branches. Okay, why? Because they were ultimately cultivated and raised in the customs. Whereas you had that wild olive branch, okay, which is symbolic of the Gentiles who were born contrary to nature. All right, they were born in the customs of the heathen, all right, but receive mercy, okay, through the preaching of the apostles and prophets who were out sent, okay, um, preaching Yahawashai. And they were granted salvation in a way back in, contrary to that first covenant, but through grace and faith. Okay. Now, I'm going to start here in verse 7. All right. Because we know a lot of our people have to fall on this side. Okay. We're going to start here at verse 7, and we'll read down and we'll get a few points, and then we'll close up. All right. It says, What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. Okay. But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Okay, now when you go to the NLT, which I have to the right, it says, So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. Okay, a few have the ones God has chosen, but the hearts of the rest were hardened. Okay, even, even unto this day, you have that narrative. Back then it was the narrative. Now there's the narrative, okay? It says, according as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day, even unto this day, okay? The Most High has shut their eyes from getting the understanding so that he can, you know, cut them off and judge them, right? But the thing is, are, are, they, are they cut off forever, or were they just cut off, all right, for this portion of the gospel to be fulfilled? We'll see. It says, as David said, okay, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. And there's and that's happening to a lot of you Israelites, man. All right, the particular things that are to be received in spirit, you choke at, you stumble over it, you get an attitude, you get mad, and you just become scoffers, man. Okay, trying to figure out a way to defeat Okay, and condemn us. Okay, and you only make a bigger mess. Okay. It says, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Okay. It says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? This is the question. <laughs> God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. All right. Right here, all right, uh, uh, let's read it in the NLT. Did God's people stumble and fall be beyond recovery? Of course not. They only fell according to the gospel, okay, so that the Gentiles at this time could be glorified, magnified through grace and faith, man, okay, and become, a, 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 um, you know, a part of the body, you see, because before that, the Gentiles were looked at as complete castaways with no way back in. Okay. It says, um, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? <laughs> All right. God forbid. All right. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And we have various accounts where the, the, the Jews or they of the circumcision who didn't follow the Messiah or the ones who taught the Messiah where they were provoked to jealousy. They were jealous. They were moved with envy. 
against, you know, the great awakening of those Gentiles who were coming out of those Greek and Roman customs and, 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 and coming to the Lord. All right. You had those of the circumcision that didn't believe on Yahweh Shah. They were like, how in the hell can they come back in? All right. So they were they were provoked to jealousy. OK. Because ultimately, as the scriptures say, the Lord was going to raise up the tents of Judah first. All right. Now, when Yahweh Shah came onto the scene. All right. He gathered those of the circumcision who were to follow him and he showed them that only the stricken, the poor, the maimed, the, the, the blinded, the halted were going to be the ones that that really believed in his message. He showed his disciples that. But as he, uh, you know, walked and did his thing, you know, those of, Ju you know, those of the circumcision, which primarily was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they followed him. Some of them. A lot of them didn't. OK, the ones that didn't and who eventually, you know, uh, rebelled against him and eventually died. OK, what you're saying is that that person. All right, will remain in oblivion forever. OK, he'll you know, he won't come back into the fold eventually. Now, an example of this. OK, an example of this is the house of Saul. Let's get a quick precept real quick. Okay, get a real quick precept. Should be in Samuel or come to the king's table. Here we go. This is Second Sam, Second Samuel's the ninth chapter. Okay, now we know uh, David. And Jonathan were very, very close friend. And Jonathan was the son of Saul. All right. Now we know the house of Saul basically were wicked. Okay. And cast off. All right. For the gospel's sake. So that the house of David can be magnified. You had to have the house of Saul within that story. Now this is 2 Samuel 9 and 6. Now. Let's see here. I just get to the point. Verse 6. It says now when. Meh. Mephibosheth, all right, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. So this is son, Saul's grandson, was coming to David. He fell on his face and did reverence, okay? And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant, okay? Now, there had been a war between the house of Saul and the house of David, right? Okay? And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. See? And I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Now, David could have been unmerciful like you all. He <laughs> said, Well, no, you're a part of the house of Saul. You're through. Now, in the kingdom, okay? In the kingdom, Who's to say Saul won't come back through his grandson and eventually be able to enjoy a nice portion, okay? Or well, however the Heavenly Father has it set up. As we can see here, the house of Saul, yeah, they were cast off and there was ultimately, you know, the, they were through. But as we can see here, an act of mercy is extended, all right, to Saul's grandson, all right, for the purpose of Saul... All right, his land being restored unto him. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and says, What is what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon? All right, such as a dead dog as I am. All right. Now what he said here in the in the NLT, because he knew that his name in the house of Saul's name was Mud. All right. Mepip Bosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, who is your servant that you should show much kindness to a dead dog like me? He understood and knew that he could have been put to death at that point. All right. <laughs> it says, then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son. Okay. All that pertain to Saul and to all his house. All right. Thou therefore 
and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the first fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. All right, but Mephibosheth, all right, thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Zebah had 15 sons and 20 servants, man. So as you read down, you know, pretty much they were all right. There was a, there, there now the house of Saul where, you know, they, they, you know, Saul died, you know, uh, the house of Saul has a tainted legacy, right? But as you can see here, ultimately a, a, an extension of mercy is offered, okay, to one of the descendants, okay, son of Jonathan. The son of Saul. So this was Saul's grandson. Right there. All right. Now, in you, you, you all's eyes, you know, pretty much that house, you know, ultimately is, is totally done and through. It will never have any portion of nothing once the kingdom is established. Well, David just told you that Saul's grandson is going to eat at his table. You see, so there is an act of mercy extended Okay, but it was through Saul's grandson. Okay, so the Heavenly Father is able to have mercy, man, and he will have mercy. Okay, upon those who he uh, uh, deems worthy to have mercy. Point blank, period, man. Okay, now we know the house of Saul in its entirety is done. Okay, and they're back today doing wickedness, but eventually in the kingdom of heaven, okay, all of those Israelites who were going off and doing wickedness. They'll have a portion, man. They'll be all right, okay? They won't be on the level of the house of David, but they will be all right, okay? And some of them will even eat at the at the table, okay, of the tabernacle of David. How about that? <laughs> all right? Now, going back to Romans 11... Romans, the 11th chapter... Okay. In 11 verse, read it again. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Okay. And be done forever? Beyond recovery, God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. All right. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world... Okay, because they had to fall in order for the Gentiles to be, you know, get their lot and portion. It's just how the story is written. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. All right, because everybody's when it's all said and done, will benefit and be blessed. All right. From those Gentiles being grafted back onto the tree. OK. <laughs> So it's just for the story's sake, they were chosen, all right, to fall, okay, and be against Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, okay, or against Yahweh Shai, because they believed in the Most High Yahweh, but they didn't accept Yahweh Shai, okay? It says, um, but but the scriptures say, if you don't believe in his son, you don't really believe in him, okay? It says, uh, verse 12 in the NLT, now if the Gentiles were enriched, because the people of Israel, which ultimately is speaking of the circumcision, because those Gentiles were looked at as a no people. They were looked at as heathen. They weren't looked at as the people of God. They were looked at as cut off and with no way back in. But there was a, a, a way for them back in through the preaching of Yahweh Shai, okay, through a grace period. It says, now if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel, the circumcision turned down God's offer of salvation, which is through Yahweh Shai, Think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. <laughs> you see that? And when are they going to accept it? Did they accept it at that time? No, the, 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 the mass majority of them died in their rebellion, man. Okay, so when are they going to accept it is when they're born back into the kingdom, man. Okay, and all knees going to bow at that point, but they're going to be born into the covenant. All right, for I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office. As we uh, always go to Galatians 2 and 7, Paul was an apostle to the uncircumcision as Peter was an apostle to the circumcision. All right, 
And the difference is the circumcision of those who were raised in the customs as opposed to the uncircumcision who were raised, all right, in Greco-Roman customs, all right, just like you and me, all right? We represent those Gentiles, all right? It says, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of my flesh, all right, and might save some of them, all right, read it in LT, for I want somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have. And what did they have? They had the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I might save some of them, but they, a lot of them rejected. Now, some of them eventually repented as time went down. Okay. But a lot of them didn't. Okay. For the purpose of the story, it says, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. So this is how the Lord, all right, is going to bring all Israel back at the end of the day. Okay. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay. Let's read it in the NLT. For since their rejection meant that God offers salvation to the rest of the world, which the world is ultimately Israel. Okay. We know the whole world ain't going to be brought back to the heavenly father. Okay. Because they never belong to him. It's the Israelites. Okay, so the rejection of the scribes and Pharisees and the wicked ones who didn't accept Yahweh Shai meant that God offered salvation unto the Gentiles, basically. Their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who were dead. Okay, what does that mean? That means eventually, when it's all said and done through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai and those who he chose, Okay, the others will be born into the covenant. Okay, it says, for if the first fruit be holy, okay, and the first fruits that we know are ultimately, uh, you know, starting with Yahweh Shai and the, the righteous men. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, the, the elect, the 144. Okay, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. That's the bottom line of what the Heavenly Father intends to do with this branch, this wild, with this olive tree, is to break off some of the branches, graft on some of the wild branches, which represents the Israelites not raised in the custom, graft them onto the tree so that the tree may live and so that the whole tree and the branches that spring forth from it can be holy. That's the purpose. Okay? <laughs> Come on, man. So if the first fruits be holy, which are those whom the Lord are going to choose to rule directly under him. All right. The lump, all Israel is going to be holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. That's the point. And if some of the branches were broken off, you see, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. Okay, and, 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 the, and the quick precept to break this all down is in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. I ain't going to read it all, but it goes into it, man. It says, a song about the Lord's vineyard. Okay, and he's speaking about his, his, his vineyard. Okay. Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out of the out of the stones thereof and planted it with choice with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wide press thereon. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. See, it was supposed to bring forth grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Let's look up this word wild. Okay, it just means they weren't cultivated, just like we weren't cultivated, okay? Uh, wild grapes, the word is ba, a, ba, sham, ba, sha, yam, okay? Stinking or worthless things, wild grapes, stink berries, the root word, ba, ba'ash, 
Okay, it says um, stench, a foul odor. Okay, and then they were worthless, ugh, like nasty, absolutely nasty. Okay, why? Because they weren't taken care of or grown or brought up the right way. Okay, now when you read down, okay. Let's see here. I'll I'm going to just jump to verse 5. And now go, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and they shall be eaten up, and break down in a wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned. Okay? What is pruned? Meaning it, it's, it's not going to be cultivated. Okay? Nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will command the clouds that they rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. He looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. So this vineyard is talking about the house of Israel, man. OK, it brought forth stinking wild grapes. It said it shall not be pruned. Let's look up the word pruned. And there's various uh, other uh, precepts. Pruned is a mar. To trim, to prune, all right, to be pruned. Basically, you're going to be a wild olive tree or a wild vineyard. As it said, wild grapes in this case, all right? So, going back to Romans 11... Right. And the 17. And if some of the branches be broken off. OK, and there is a uh, scripture. Uh, let's see. I live. Sure. Yep, Isaiah 24 and 13, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as a shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes when the vengeance is done. Here's the one I want. Jeremiah 11 and 16, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a multitude, he hath kindled fire upon it and the branches are broken. And what is that noise of a, a great tumult? All right, the heathen nations coming and judging us. OK, and in that we lost our customs. We lost our ways. Give me one second here. And we're basically broken off from the, 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 the covenants. You know, we were through. One second here. All right. So verse 17, Romans 11 and 17. Uh, it says, and if some of the branches were broken off and thou being a wild olive tree, let's look at wild here in the uh, New Testament. A wild olive tree. Okay. It says, uh, R. Strong's G65. Agri Elias. Agri Elias. All right, of belonging to the Ole Easter or wild olive. The Ole Easter, the wild olive tree. Okay. Hmm. Here we go. Wild Ogrios. Living or growing in a field of woods of animals. All right, boorish. Wild, savage, uncultivated, uncultivated, unrec unreclaimed. That's how the Israelites who were raised in these different captivities were. They got amongst the heathen and forgot who they were, and they weren't cultivated by the law, statutes, and commandments. Whereas the natural branches, okay, they were cultivated. They knew about the laws. They knew not to bow to these idols. They knew these different things, man. But a savage, a wild, uncultivated, unreclaimed, savage, 
boorish, rude, okay, vehement, furious. That's speaking of the Israelites who ultimately were grafted into the tree, all right? And if some of the branches be broken off, and it's the natural branches, right? Real quick. Galatians 2 and 15, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, okay? That word for nature, who are Jews by nature, Sisis, okay? Nature, the nature of things, the force, laws, Order of nature as opposed to what is monstrous, abnormal, or perverse. So they were opposed to those who weren't raised in the customs of the law, man. Okay? It says, as opposed to what has been produced by the art of man, right, the natural branches, i.e. the branches by the operation of nature, birth, physical origin. And they were born in Judea. Okay? So they, they were born in the customs. Okay? They were born in Judea and they were looking down. Okay, most of them were born in Judea, but they looked down on those Israelites who weren't and who were born amongst these different captivities, man. Learning the different uh, ways of the heathen, man. Okay. Nature, natural strength, ferocity. All right. So what is our nature? Our natural ways are the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, to produce, to born. So they were born in the customs. That's the point, you know. Let me just hit a few more points here in Romans 11. It says, um, and if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and were, and with them are partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Okay. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bears not the root. All right. But the root thee. Okay, so you, you know, you waking up to the fact you're the Israelite, then you start to boast and y'all fail because, you know, so I can be brought in. No, 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 that's not the mindset he's saying. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's read that in the NLT verse 17. But if some of these branches from Abraham's tree, it's all going back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, man. Which at the very beginning of the chapter, he said, I'm an Israelite of the seed of uh, uh, Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay. Now, we go very in-depth on various other videos, but I'm just going through these points, man. Because it seems a lot of people don't understand Romans 11, so this is for you. But if some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off. Still talking about Israelites. You know, you Christians like to hijack Abraham. And you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree, not pruned, not, you know, cultivated have been grafted in still an olive. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham. What was that? The promised land was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is what we're set up to receive. All right. This is what the remnant is set up for. To 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 be the the, the, the established back in the land under Yahushai. Okay. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham. And his children sharing in the rich nourishment from the root, from the root of God's special olive tree. Okay. We know Yahweh is the root. It says, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Okay. You haven't chosen him. He chose you. Okay. You can't brag. It says, thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief that were broken off. And within the story, many Israelites will be concluded under unbelief. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Okay? <laughs> the circumcision and the uncircumcision, all right? Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity. Yeah, they fail. That's severe. And even now in this time, you see 
those who fall, you be like, damn. And they be bugged out, okay? But toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt also be cut out. So be mindful of, of boasting and being high-minded, okay? It says, and they also, if they abide not still in under belief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. According to you all, they can't be grafted in again. But right here, it says the Lord is able to graft them in again. All right? For if thou wert cut off out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature. Now, how were they grafted in contrary to nature? Because it wasn't based upon them being a natural branch that they were grafted in. They were wild. They weren't raised in the customs, right? So if thou were cut out of the olive tree, and how were they cut out? Well, we go back to Isaiah, Jeremiah 11 and 16. They were cut out because the Lord judged us. Okay? We were judged by the Lord, right? For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own tree? So eventually they'll be good. <laughs> you see, they, it was just by unbelief that they fell at that time for the Gentiles to be established. But overall, all Israel is going to be saved and let's prove it. It's just going to be a particular order. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. And this goes into us now. You see, that blindness in part has happened unto Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And once that those Gentiles are all established, the Lord is going to roll with them. And we're coming back in these latter days from that dead state, putting off those idols just like they were back then in this time. Okay? It says... And so all Israel shall be saved. It's telling you right there. Even those who were broken off and, and, and abided in unbelief, they're going to be brought back into the tree as well. Okay? <laughs> it's just that everybody has their, their, their order and how they do it. Or either you're going to be of that first dominion or you're going to come through that first dominion. Okay? Blindness in part has happened unto Israel, unto the... Uh, Gentiles, all right, can come in, okay? <laughs> Goodness gracious, L listen to what this says in, in, in the NLT. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, and a lot of you don't, so that you would feel that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Don't be proud and high-minded. Some of the people of Israel have had have hard hearts, meaning the Lord has hardened their hearts. But this will last only until the full members of the Gentiles becomes, all right, comes to the Messiah. All right. <laughs> so they were only blotted out, all right, and undesirable for the purpose of the gospel. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of sign a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see, all of us are going to be uh, uh, fully blessed at the end of the day with the new covenant. For this is my covenant to them when I shall take away their sins. All of them, the ones who abided in unbelief and the ones who stood firm. All of our sins are going to be taken away. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching election, they are beloved for the father's sake. So... They're enemies for the gospel. They had to fall for the gospel, but as touching election, they're still beloved of the father. They're Israelites. Even Saul, all right, in the kingdom, Saul going to be somewhere blessed. Okay, he ain't going to be somewhere in the spiritual realm wishing he can come down or burning in hell somewhere. No, he's going to be brought back and he's going to be good for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Okay. He chose us to be Israelites and we're going to be Israelites. Okay. But it's going to be through that remnant elect. See, Saul is going to come back and he's going to acknowledge David. See, when David was around and he was doing his thing, Saul was mad. See, the two third, the ones who hating on us and the, the y'all are going to be son. You're going to come back in the kingdom and you're going to appreciate the leadership that the Lord set up. 
And it's all good. For as in times past, ye have not believed God, yet now I've obtained mercy through their unbelief. See that? Even so have these now also not believed that through your mercy, they may obtain mercy. See that? Through your mercy, they're going to obtain mercy. How? Explain that. All right, because this is going into what was happening back then. But really, this is speaking in a grand scheme of things. When all Israel is saved, though those who were undesirable and didn't believe, they're going to obtain mercy through the first fruits being planted, the mercy of the elect. For God have concluded them all in unbelief that he may have mercy on all. So we were unbelievers at a point. So because the Lord chose us as vessels to come to life and light in these times, we can't get high minded. We still have to remain humble and lowly. Now we are going to go back and forth with the wicked of our people. All right. But we don't push a message that, hey, hey, uh, uh, you're going to be destroyed forever. No, you're an Israelite. You'll be all right one day. OK. And you all think that that's, you know, that y'all think that that's wrong, but you didn't create those spirits. He said he's going to have mercy upon all men. Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. That's a lot to wrap your mind around. <laughs> right? That's a lot to really, when you think about it, it's a lot to wrap your mind around. All right. But it's actually badass. It's actually amazing. That's amazing. All right. Jesse Peterson. For who have known the mind of the Lord or who have been his counselor? Nigga, you not the counselor of the most high telling him what he can do with the spirits he created. <laughs> the Lord created those spirits, man. Okay. Zechariah 12 and 1, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretch it forth the heavens and lay it the foundation of the earth. You niggas can barely barbecue. You never made a sun. You never made a moon. You can't make air, but you're going to tell the heavenly father what to do with his spirits and form it the spirit of man within him. <laughs> those are his spirits. He, those spirits return to him when they leave earth and he sends them back down when they come to the earth as he sees fit. Okay. <laughs> well, who have first given him to him and it shall be recompensed to him again. You ain't give the Lord a damn thing. For of him and through him and to him are all things to, to whom be the glory forever amon. And this is how the Lord is going to save all Israel through the elect remnant, those 7,000 who have not bowed to the image of Baal, which is symbolic of the 144 being established in a large multitude. That's how all Israel is going to be saved. Some are going to die and be destroyed Okay, but they'll be back, man. Shalom.